Let's get salty! Hey everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video. And yesterday we took a look at what the worst performing cards so far have been from United and Stormwind in standard uh, through like the past couple of weeks using HS replay statistics. And well, you guys seem to enjoy that. It was a lot of fun to make. So I thought I would take a look. At what are the most busted cards? What cards are doing the most work? And we'll do it similar to last time. We'll look at deck win rate as well as, as, well as filter. This time by top 1000 legend uh, for the more popular cards, there's a lot more data for these cards. So I can use higher ranks to give an idea of like what the best players are able to utilize. So we'll go with top 1000 legend. And again, just a quick reminder, we are on our 40,000 sub goal by the end of year. If you haven't hit that sub button, you feel I've earned your subscription. I really appreciate if you hit that button. We're getting close really quickly. So thank you guys for that. But anyways, let's take a look at it. And again, I'll edit it so it looks all nice and stuff, but let's take a look at what the most broken cards so far from United Stormwind are. So starting off at number 10, I believe this card appeared on my uh, prediction for the worst cards of United and Stormwind. And at number 10, we have Auction House Gavel. Two mana shaman weapon after your hero attacks, reduce the cost of a battle cry minion in your hand by one. This appears right now in 1.9% of decks with a 53.9% deck win rate and has been played approximately 11,000 times. And yeah, it's just really good in elemental shaman mainly, not really anything else going on with that, but uh, a lot of the elementals have battle cries. So you play this on two and you're able to cheat stuff out and that's just really good. And dealing two damage with the weapon is pretty productive. And I guess I just undersold the mana cheating on this card when I initially uh, reviewed and predicted this card. And shockingly, Zeddy was wrong. That's a first though, never happened before. And yes, Auction House Gavel doing pretty well on the ladder. At number nine, we have Park Panther, the Druid Beast. Four mana, four, four rush. Whenever this attacks, give your hero plus three attack this turn. It is in 7.6% of decks with a 54.1% win rate and played over four, uh, played around 40,000 times. And this card actually appears in multiple archetypes. It's in the uh, commonly right now in like aggro taunt druid. Uh, some people run Kazakus instead of Park Panther, but some people obviously run Park Panther. And it also appears in like quest druids. And I think even some guardian animals list might run it. Might be a little bit, not the like the, not the greatest thing to cheat out, but regardless, there's quite a few archetypes that use this card. It's just a ridiculously good card. Four mana, four, four, and you get a three attack initially on it. If it sticks on the board, it gets even more ridiculous. You can cheat it out with like the rank spell and things like that. Really solid card and an absolute powerhouse in arena as well. So Park Panther doing some really good work. And number eight, we have a one drop, a neutral one drop. Peasant, one mana, two, one, and at the start of your turn, draw a card. This card is in 8.2% of decks with a 54.1% deck win rate and has been played over 50,000 times in the last two weeks. And well, you're going to notice a common trend. A lot of these cards are part of Token Druid, hence the high win rate. And we might change the way we quantify these. I, I looked at like played win rate. That doesn't make sense because finishers will do really well. Um, drawn win rate maybe, but overall, I thought deck win rate was the way to go. And yeah, a lot of these cards are just coming together to make a couple of good decks. And well, that's the way it is. But Peasant does see play in aggro Druid, but it also sees play in other aggro decks. It's just a one drop that has to be answered immediately and if it doesn't it's going to draw cards and you can throw this into a face hunter you can buff it all sorts of things and in the taunt druid you put behind taunts that's pretty good and draw cards and turns out one mana draw a card a good amount of the time unless you get coin pinged is very solid and uh makes nat peggle really really sad and probably crying in a corner at number seven is a card that's very surprising to me very high up and that is City Tax. This is a tradable spell for Paladin that has lifesteal one dam deal one damage to all enemy minions. It is in 4.1% of decks with a 54.2% win raid and played 11,000 times. So not nearly as popular as the last two cards, but just a really, really good card in Libram Paladin is just done incredibly well there. Pair it up with like uh, Barov or Libram of Justice. That's a full board clear that heals you. And Libram Paladin has done quite well. And you know, you trade it away. That can be solid as well. Just a really good card. One that took me by surprise. I just didn't think this card would fit that well into Paladin in the current meta, but yeah, it turns out that Libram Paladin is good enough and getting that type of board clear or just clear in tokens in general against the aggro taunt druid, which appears a lot on this list, uh, is pretty good in the meta. At number six is a card that is loathed by many and you can 
cite this video if you want people to tell you that this quest isn't that good. But yes, at number six, we have Sorcerer's Gambit. The mage quest is the sixth best performing card in United Stormwind with a, in 10.9% of decks with a 54.2% win rate and played 80 2,000 times, by far the most played card on this list. The only card played more in this expansion in the last two weeks is Ignite because there's two copies and they shuffle. But yeah, Sorcerer's Gambit is an actual top 10 most powerful card. And there's a reason why it is that frustrating and polarizing because this card just crushes any slower archetype out there when you pair it up with an Ignite. And yes, Quest Mage, absolute juggernaut in the meta. And it might not have the best win rate, but again, it is heavily targeted. It heavily warps everything. You either have to race Sorcerer's Gambit with aggro or combo strategy, or you are not winning. And this card's power level being in the top 10, well, it kind of shows that it's really effective at doing that. At number five, we have another card, very surprising to me on the list and not played a ton, so probably some sample size issues here, but that is Noble Mount. Two mana, uh, Paladin Spell, give a minion plus one, plus one in Divine Shield. While it When it dies, summon a Warhorse, and that Warhorse is one, one Divine Shield, and this is in 0.9% of decks uh, with a 54.2% win rate and only played 4,900 times. This just allows Paladin to stick on the board. Paladin loves to stick on the board. You know, it's two layers of Divine Shield to get through. That is very frustrating. That's a very hard for most decks to get through, so you throw this into a hand buff Paladin or a secret Paladin, just something aggressive, you're really going to struggle to remove whatever minion this got attached to, and then you can buff it with whatever buffs he got and just start killing your opponent. And yeah, this card performing very well, but again, small sample size, and uh, it's in an aggressive lineup, so that typically skews things a little bit. At number four, we have another Druid card. By the way, there's a couple more coming. Uh, we have Oracle of a Loon. Three mana, two, four. After you play a minion that costs two or less, summon a copy of it. This card is in 8.3% of decks with a 54.4% win rate and has been played 47,000 times. We all know the deal with this card. You get a Razor Mane on the board. You play Oracle of a Loon. You get a bunch of Anoyotrons, Maulers, Sumber Pack Mules, or you could cob if you got a couple of Razor Mains, then you can get like uh, Graybos out there and just get duplicates upon duplicates card sees a little bit of play you can do some fun meme stuff with like alignment where all your cards cost one and then copy stuff with a loon but it's basically used in that aggro taunt strategy and it's doing a very good job absolutely disgusting card razor main is the card that really spikes the win rate but when you couple it with oracle of the loon things just get absolutely out of control at number three we have a nerfed card on the list at number three and that is the shaman card granite forgeborn Four mana, four, four, battle cry, reduce the cost of elementals in your hand and deck by one. This originally was a four, five. It is now a four, four, but it's still in 2.6% of decks with a 54.4% win rate played around 16,000 times. Been watching my friend Cantaloupe do very well at top 100 legend playing elemental shaman and granite forgeborn just gives you a ridiculous amount of mana cheat. It literally hits every elemental, whether it's in your deck, in hand, that's a ridiculous effect. Taking one health off of that didn't really change much. And you cop, you know, you couple that up with auction house gavel. That is a lot of mana cheat and your, your elementals have damaged battle cries and things like that. It gets out of control very quickly. Very powerful card. There's a lot of mana cheat you can couple into this. And as a result, it's number three in a sea of like druid cards. And while well, the last two are kind of druid cards, so let's get into them. At number two, this card is the absolute nuts and is the vibrant squirrel. One minute, two, one beast. Death rattle shuffle four acorns into your deck. When drawn, summon a two, one squirrel. This is in 8.1% of decks with a 54.6% win rate and played 52 thousand times we all know the deal this you play squirrel on one and you summon some squirrels later but when you couple it with like oracle of the loon and get a bunch of squirrels and then you have composting and you just draw your deck you're just your opponent might clear what you have but they're just going to draw squirrel after squirrel after squirrel and then you can buff that up whether it be with an arbor up or whatever it's just a really solid ridiculous one drop with if you think about the think about the stats attached to this it's one mana two one plus four other two ones you'll get eventually. Th that's an absurd amount of stats. It is over time, but this deck does not exactly struggle to draw cards. Hell, even with the uh, Peasant, Peasant can rip some more uh, scrolls for you. And yes, this card is doing an incredible job in standard, hence why it's number two. And well, 
What's number one? Yes, it goes in this aggro deck, and yes, it has the same win rate. And that is composting. The two mana druid spell, give your man minions death rattle, draw a card. It is in 8.1% of decks, has a 54.6% win rate, and has been played 37,000 times. This is the card that makes aggro druid never run out of cards. Basically, no other deck can possibly build a board as quickly as aggro druid. No deck really has the tools to remove it outside of like Mage with Fire Sail. And you know, you have Brawl, you have uh, Soul Rend. Like there's there's very limited board clear options. And if you don't remove their board, they're gonna put composting on the board. They're never gonna run out of cards. And well, you're just gonna get aggro down. I remember I tried hitting Legend with Control Warrior and composting was the card that just kept locking me out. Every time I thought I was running them out of cards, running them out of the board, composting would come down and I would be screwed. And this card is just absurd at two mana. You hit two minions with this. That's two mana draw to. Think about how good that is. That, that in itself is good. And that's a bad case scenario. Card is ridiculous. And uh, maybe I'll make a nerf uh, demand video or prediction video or something like that soon. And this card might be one I will want to consider. So there you go. Those are the top 10 most broken cards so far from the United Store win. Aggro Druid's doing pretty well, but you can see there's a mix of other stuff and Quest Mage made the list. So you can't argue with numbers apparently, right? So demand those Quest Mage nerfs. We got definitive proof. The quest is kind of ridiculous. So there you go. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends. <laughs>